this has been a franchise known for its pitchers. From Seaver to Kuzman to Gooden to Darley. He struck out the side. To Cone. He's a look It has happened. And already Dickey is a 20 game winner. Stroke him out. Jacob DeGrom unrelentingly brilliant. That's really good. That's really, really good. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Milwaukee Brewers in the first game of a day-night doubleheader. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. By City, proud partner of the New York Mets. By Spectrum, Spectrum Mobile has unlimited talk, text, and data. You can save up to 40%. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. By Impractical Jokers, the Impractical Jokers return with all new episodes Thursdays on True TV. And by Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A is a proud partner of the New York Mets and SNY Play Ball. Well, when you're in first place, your place of business is a place where you like to show up. It's good coming to work when things are going well. Seth Lugo back in a groove after a stint on the injured list. Trevor May has found his niche as well with his new team. And then there's Dom Smith, red hot with the bat over the last 10 days. Jonathan VR back to health. Been a big spark plug for the Mets this year. And then, of course, there's the polar bear. Hi, Pete. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you today as the Mets play a day-night doubleheader after last night's rainout with the Milwaukee Brewers. And because of the rainout, we get one of the better pitching matchups mm -hmm. of the season, Jacob DeGrom against Corbin Burns. DeGrom was supposed to start last night to give him two starts before the All-Star break. Now we'll get the start today, and then mm -hmm. a little bit of uncertainty what happens after that. Well, for most pitchers that are human, this would be a difficult thing, but he seems unfazed by any of that stuff. We've always talked about how great he is in uh, the sunlight pitching sunshine Superman also he is number one in just about every single category I don't know about you Gary I really feel from the booth we're like the caretaker of the DeGrom history here in 2021 and Corbett Burns last year emerged as one of the best starters in the National League and he's carried that over to this year yes he has and his stuff is incredible it's as good as Woodruff's in the first game of this series a guy that you'll see a lot of cut fastballs but a a, lot, a big, huge power arm. So two big right-hand starters going head-to-head -to, -head to Grom and Burns on a Wednesday afternoon in New York. It's the Mets and Brewers. All the action on SNY. Your ETFs. Visit them on the web at sectorspiders.com. Your Mets health report. Noah Syndergaard still recovering from Tommy John surgery. The Mets are hoping to have, have him back around September 1st for more let's check in with Steve Gelb Steve and Gary a good sign for the Mets and for Syndergaard he recently started throwing again so looks to be on track barring any setbacks for that time and you may remember that the last time Syndergaard was healthy he actually was a part of a joke here a punishment on that great show and practical jokers well they've got a new season coming up it is one of the best shows on TV and the guys will be here for game two for an interview so that should be a lot of fun in the meantime head to SMY's Instagram page there's an Instagram filter an impractical jokers Instagram filter for everybody out there to try out in anticipation of the next season of the show by the way one more note on Noah Syndergaard he set the record back in 2016 for most pitches in a single season over 100 miles per hour for a starting pitcher, at least since they started tracking these things back in 2008. Jacob DeGrom already just 17 behind that record. So today he may surpass Noah for that record among starting pitchers, the great Sarah Langs. That was her stat, so give a shout out there. It's a fantastic pitching matchup, one of the best of the season, and it's coming up after this.
Jacob DeGrom has seemed fleetingly human in his last couple of starts. Gave up two runs against the Phillies, gave up three against the Braves, but then retired 18 in a row and settled back into superhuman qualities. Pitching in the sunshine today, which he is the best in history at. So he gave up four earned runs in his first 12 starts and five in his last two. <laughs> He's sinking as we speak. 0.95 ERA as he begins the day. Luis Arias leads off. One for four in the series opener, and he takes a fastball up and in, and we're underway. See the Toyota numbers on the ground, just ungodly. Uh, 35 hits and 85 innings, the 136 strikeouts, 11 free passes. My goodness. And Rios takes one below the knees, and it's two and zero. Oh. Rios play most of the third base these days for the Brewers, with Travis Shaw on the injured list. Christian Yelich and Willie Adamas on deck for Milwaukee. They've lost their last two after winning 11 in a row, beaten by the Mets four to two night before last. And Rios pops one foul back in out of play, two and one. Craig Council now in his seventh year as the Brewers' skipper. Here is his Hyundai starting lineup. Only one change from the first game of the series. Avasail Garcia, who's been nursing a hamstring, is in there. Tyrone Taylor is out. Yelich has great career numbers against DeGrom. We'll see if that holds up with the current versions of DeGrom and Yelich. They haven't faced each other in a couple of years. And Rhea Sox one to deep left field. Back goes Dom Smith, and that ball is out of here. A leadoff home run for Luis Urias. And for the second straight start, DeGrom has been rocked for a home run in the first inning. Austin Riley in Atlanta, and now Luis Arias, a leadoff home run, his 11th home run of the season, 1 0 Milwaukee. I don't remember the last time I saw Jacob DeGrom in the first inning versus the leadoff hitter go to 2 0 count. He gets the 2 1, not even center cut, but Urias jumped all over it. In Monday night's game in the eighth inning, he jumped all over fastball first pitch for a bullet base hit, this time over the wall. Rios did not hit a home run last year in the short season. He's now got 11 this year. It's the fourth leadoff home run DeGrom's allowed in his career, but his first since 2019. And so he starts the day in a hole once again. Here's Yelich. 0 for 4 in the series opener, and he takes a fastball upstairs for ball one. So fastball command here on the first two hitters, a little off for DeGrom. Highly unusual. And Yelich swings over the slider, and it's 1 and 1. So the numbers for Yelich against DeGrom 15 for 34, 441. Most of that compiled in his time with the Marlins. It's been a struggle for Yelich this year as it was last year. And DeGrom changing the game plan a little bit after all the fastballs early. Gets ahead on Yelich with the slider, one and two. That's the fifth home run DeGrom has allowed this year. One in each of his last two starts. And Yelich takes strike three calls, slider on the inside corner. So three straight sliders from DeGrom. To get Yelich for the first out of the day. Watch the uh, follow through on the overhead shot we give you of the fastball center cut. I mean, takes the hand off the bat. That follow through almost 180 degrees around the torso of Urias. And that's where he generates that power. And there's contact, head down, right on it. And 99 provides a lot of power. Here's Willie Adamas. His arrival has. Spark the Brewers. 30 and 12 since he arrived in late May from Tampa Bay, and he has swung the bat extremely well as a Brewer. He fouls back the fastball in its own two. In game one, he had to hit coast to coast. First that bat, he had to hit down the left field line against Edwin Diaz in the ninth. He had a hit down the right field line. O2 coming to Adamas. And he struck him out on three pitches. Slider gets Adamas for the second out. So back to back strikeouts for DeGrom after the Arias home run. We love taking a look at the side angle. First, the last pitch of the strikeout to Adamas. Two sliders now have struck out both Yelich and Adamas. Not a great one, but the differential in speed gets him out in front. 
and then the side swing of Urias. Urias, watch his back leg just collapse and almost like he's just grounding that back foot into the ground to get that extra power. Last leadoff home run against DeGrom. Scott Kingery of the Phillies two years and two days ago. Here's Omar Narvaez who homered in the first game of the series. So I don't know if it's the extra day. Last night's rain canceled game. We always talk about DeGrom is in total control. This is one of the few times that he's been overthrowing a little here in the first inning. Check swing grounder in comes Guillaume to field it and he throws out Narvaez to end the inning but the leadoff home run by Arias gives the Brewers the early lead. All their left handed bats in there other than McKinney and VR against Corbin Burns who is death to right hand batters. <laughs> This burns his numbers. Land Rover numbers. He's going to be going to his first All Star game. ERA at 2.41. Won his last start. Only gave up a run in seven and a third innings against the Bucks, but came out early after 89 pitches. He's been dealing with a sore knee, so it'll be something that we'll watch this afternoon. Defensively behind Corbin Burns today. You can see Peterson get a lot of work now. Colton Wong is out. Justin here is at first base Narvaez with a home run on Monday's game Yelich Bradley Jr. and Garcia Bradley Jr. didn't mention it on Monday maybe one of the finest center fielders in the game. Won a gold glove with the Red Sox in 2018. So here's Burns who started out his career in the bullpen had a horrible year in 2019. They moved him to the starting rotation last year he finished sixth in the Cy Young balloting and he is uh, off to a fabulous start in 2021. Brandon Nimmo leads off been a huge spark plug since he returned from the injured list that's a three and one since he returned and that first fastball is down from Burns ball one Nimmo Lindor and Smith for the Mets who had the one big inning against the Brewers in the opening game of the series on Monday they generally have been doing that later in games and that was the case in that game against Brandon Woodruff and a cutter in for a strike and it's one and one. Most of the fastballs that Burns throws will cut. Yes. Will also throw sinkers, but the cutter is something of a natural fastball release for him. You'll see a if he's if he's on today, be a lot of broken bats. Down the left field line by Nimmo, and that'll go foul out of play. It's kind of like um, like Henry Mejia's fastball, yeah. like Kenley Jansen's fastball. They don't consciously cut the ball, but it cuts when they release their fastball naturally. You know, um, most of the guys that cut the fastball is because they have a very strong middle finger, and that's where the ball comes off. That middle finger with a lot of pressure, that's how it gets that little cutting action. Nemo two hits in the opening game of this series. Nets are facing Burns as a starter for the first time. He faced them in relief for two and a third back in 2019. And that cutter misses low when it's two and two. And talking about 2019 for Burns that year he made 32 appearances four starts he had an 8.82 ERA and gave up 17 home runs in 49 innings. He was lost. And then he bounced back last year. And the home run numbers in particular it's almost like Edwin Diaz right where last year he gave up just two home runs all year this year he's given up only three. Interesting that we mentioned DeGrom overthrowing in that first inning so is Burns. Mm -hmm. Well he was not supposed to throw last night he was supposed to pitch tonight's game in the uh, initial iteration of the Brewers rotation moved up to pitch the day game against DeGrom today. Chop foul. And by the way, if you're wondering why the Mets are playing a split doubleheader today, it's mostly because of the weather tonight. The weather is supposed to be iffy, much as it was last night. So if they had scheduled a straight twilight doubleheader at five o'clock, they would have risked not playing either game. Mm. And that's why they moved this game up. They also couldn't play a day doubleheader because that would have been unfair to the people who bought tickets for tonight's game, who bought tickets for a seven o'clock game. So even though it's not a perfect solution that's why the decision was made to play 
a split doubleheader to at least make sure they get one game in. Nimmo drives one toward the gap in left center. That's down for an extra base hit. And Nimmo loses the helmet as he cruises into second base with a leadoff double. So each team beginning the day with an extra base hit. Well, I think Pete Alonso said it right. Just Brandon Nimmo is such a spark plug for this team, not only with his athletic abilities, but also his hustle, his energy, everything that he brings to the game at that leadoff position gets the Mets started in the right direction. But also the ability to lay off two pitches that were very close to being strikes. He has such a great eye and then extended the at bat long enough for Burns to make a mistake. You know he worked very hard in the minor leagues on it. No one has better strike zone awareness than Brandon Nimmo. Well Lindor bunted in a similar circumstance to get the Mets first run in on Monday. See if he's inclined to do that again. He's not on the first pitch and he takes low and away ball one. So the Mets even we've seen him bunt a lot in the first the Mets down a run. He's apt to swing the bat. Well, that's how I see it. Luis Rojas has been asked repeatedly about Lindor's bunts, and he's got five sacrifices now. He said he's talked to him. He prefers that he swings the bat. Lindor has explained it's part of his game. He feels as though it's it's a good prod to his teammates about playing team baseball. Routed down to first base and foul. And so, as as uh, Louis put it. I wasn't arguing with him about it. I wasn't no. being demeaning about it. I was just telling him I'd rather him swing the bat, and he's going to do what he wants to do. Well, you know, one of the great things about uh, Louis Rojas, Luis Rojas, is that when he does something in the game, he always has an explanation for it. So he's got to be able to appreciate a player that he might question why he's doing something, but if he has a good explanation for it, let it breathe. One and one to Lindor with Dom Smith on deck. And a curveball up and away from Burns. Two balls and a strike. Burns has been getting a lot of mileage out of that curveball. It's been hard to hit, but he missed badly with his first one of the day. Corbin Burns, 26 years old, St. Mary's College in Moraga, California. One of the few schools that even recruited him out of high school. He was not highly regarded. Routed to the right side, and that's a foul ball, just foul. Well, the Mets have played exactly 81 games, which is half a season, so it's an appropriate time to look at the pace that players are on for the full season. Lindor, one of those players that tends to play 155 plus games. Hard to believe that those would be his numbers at the end, but I can see the projection. That means he's got a lot of a, a lot of hits in him, I think, in the second half. He's got some catching up. Too. Yeah. Two two coming from Burns. And it's blooped behind third base. Back goes Arias. He won't get their base hit. Nimmo read it well. He's gonna score without a throw, and the Mets have tied the game. A bloop single by Lindor. Nimmo running all the way, and the Mets tied at one. Well, we've already seen the approach here by Nimmo and Lindor trying to stay inside this cutter and go the other way. Listen, kind of a lucky hit. He gets jammed and dumps it over the head of Urias. But great read by Nimmo. And one of the joys of doing this job is to watch good base running, and Nimmo. Great read on that little dunker into left field. It was right in front of him. He saw and nobody was going to get to it. So he scores the 30th run batted in for Lindor. And so the Mets immediately get even. And now here's Dom Smith, who has the hottest bat in the lineup right now. Dom's got a seven game hitting streak working. Now Burns has a lot of problems holding base runners. He's given up 13 stolen bases this year, the most of any pitcher in the National League, and has not had a single caught stealing. It's interesting for someone who pitches primarily from the stretch. Uh, he's a guy that's very slow to the plate and very deliberate to the plate. Trying to hold it a little extra time and use a slide step, and he gets a fastball in for a strike to Dom. So it's clear that he's working on it. 
right you can see the the longer hold time the the ability to use a slide step but it certainly has been a concern for the Brewers and really a, one of the few crimps in Burns's game so far this year. Three infielders on the right side against Dom nobody covering the last 65 feet on the third baseline. You know in music you have the metronome that goes back and forth on a timely basis. You don't want to be like that if you're a pitcher. Base runners love that and that's why Burns is trying to upset a little bit of that timing because he can be very metronome like to the plate. And a high throw and Hero who's not a tall man able to pull it down. I wouldn't say that Burns has a good move but he does throw it about 96 miles an hour over to Hero makes up for it. By the way the Brewers have another first base option today they picked up Rowdy Tellez from Toronto and he reported today and was added to the roster. And now Dom trying to bunt for a hit misses the bunt attempt Well, they were giving him the bunt but rather than laying it down Dom tried to push it and missed the attempt and it's 0 and 2. You know my feeling is I love this play if they're going to give you the bunt face hit. The problem is I don't like it when you have one strike because now you're only left with one left. But that's when they give it to you. So now two strike count to Smith Alonzo on deck. Lindor with eight steals this year has been caught twice. And the fastball in for a call third strike. And Cutter found the outside corner, and that's the first out for Corbin Burns. So his cutter at times, Gary, can serve as a backdoor pitch because he throws it so hard. It starts off the plate and just bends over that outside part. Gets the call from Quinn Wolcott. With a little help from Omar Narvaez, <laughs> bringing that ball back into the strike zone. So Burns, who Started the season by striking out 58 batters before his first walk, the longest streak ever from the start of a year. And it was the longest streak at any point in the year until Garrett Cole surpassed him and went 61 strikeouts without a walk. He has his first strikeout of the day, and here's Pete Alonzo. And Pete goes after a first pitch cutter, nothing in one. I mean, just. Nasty. That's the first pitch fastball that you see come out of the hand, and Pete missed that by six inches. Pete had the go ahead hit for the Mets in game one of this series, a two run double, gave him 200 RBIs for his Mets career. And Alonso has now driven in 10 runs in his last nine games, and those are the full season projections for Pete 30 and 90. Line toward the middle. That's a base hit for Alonzo. The Mets' third hit, the first four batters against Corbin Burns. A cutter finds a little off the end of Pete's bat, but he's so strong. And Lindor, see the contact on that outside pitch. Very similar to the pitch he swung through, but this one up just enough for Pete to handle it. So with a run in first and second and one out for Jeff McNeil. Jacob DeGrom cooling his heels hoping his team can get him a lead before he goes back to the mound. McNeil 0 for 3 in the opening game of the series. 11 for 49 since coming off the injured list. And takes a first pitch curveball for a strike. Good counter by Burns. McNeil's first at bat on Monday against Woodruff. Pull the fastball foul. Home run distance. The league is hitting just 197 against Burns, but 281 with runners in scoring position. So when he's gotten in trouble, sometimes he's had trouble finding his way out of it. He's already given up a hit with a runner at second base, and he misses with a sinker, and it's one and one. It's 
Ronnie mentioned his last start was shortened a bit because he had a sore knee. He suffered a bone bruise, they said, about while running the bases. But he still went seven and thir a third in that game against the Pirates. And that goes to the backstop, and the runners are moved to second and third. Wild pitch that snuck by Narvaez and moves the runners into scoring position. Navarez was sitting on that inside corner. He's got to expect that cutting action to Burns. I'm not saying that he's got to stop it from going to the backstop, but he's got to anticipate that. Third wild pitch of the season for Burns. See how the Brewers play their infield here. They're going to play back at second and short. So trying to stem the big inning, they'll concede a run on a ground ball to a middle infielder. Lindor the lead run at third, Alonzo at second. Remember, this is a seven inning game, which also affects how you make those decisions. And the breaking ball bounced foul, and it's two and two. Might have something for Craig Council to do with that number you just gave of 281 with runners in scoring position. So wants to give his pitcher the best chance of getting him out here. One of the best young managers in the game, Craig Council. Well, he's had an embarrassment of riches on his pitching staff, much as the Mets have had on theirs, with Woodruff and Burns and Freddie Peralta heading their rotation in much the same fashion that DeGrom and Walker and Stroman have for the Mets. But Burns in first inning trouble, a run in, second and third, one out. And McNeil just got a piece, but he foul tipped it, and it's held by Narvaez for strike three. And so two strikeouts in the inning for Burns, and now. He's got a chance to get through it with just one run scoring. I mean, there's so many strikeouts in the game. Um, this ball was center cut cutter, but you do appreciate when a pitcher can dial it up and get that strikeout when he needs it. 13.2 strikeouts every nine innings for Burns. That's second to Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, second in this game. <laughs> Jake's at 14.4. <laughs> So it's left to Michael Conforto. Michael had an RBI hit in the Mets' seventh inning rally on Monday. But the hits have been hard to come by for Michael since coming off the injured list. Just five for 37. Chance to do some damage here with Lindor at third and Alonzo at second and two out. Burns already 22 pitches deep into this first inning. Lindor getting a little dash down the line to try and get in his line of sight. And the first pitch curveball in for a strike. So we've seen that to both McNeil and Conforto. Burns go to that first pitch, get me over curve. I think uh, Conforto is going to see more of that maybe in this at bat with Guillaume behind him. He might not catch a center cut a pitch at this at bat. Lindor keeps walking further and further down the line with Arias playing well off the line. And that curveball catches the corner and burns quickly ahead 0 2. So Conforto finds himself quickly in a hole. Comes Lindor a little further. And Conforto fouls off the cutter. 0 oh and 2. Well, they want that 0 oh 2 pitch back after two real nifty curveballs, a center cut fastball by Burns. Luis Guillorme would be next. Not overly shifted on Conforto. Rios takes a step toward Lindor as he keeps walking further down the line. That's hit hard, but right at the second baseman. Peterson has it and throws out Conforto to end the inning. Mets get just the one run and tie the game at one. The impractical Jokers are back. Join your favorite Jokers, Joe Q. Murr, and of course, Prince Herb for all new episodes. Second inning, 1 1 game. Jacob DeGrom faces off as Samuel Garcia leading off in the second. Garcia did not start the opening game of the series. He's been battling a bit of a hamstring. Do not blink when he's at the plate. He swings at a higher percentage of first pitches than any player in the major leagues. 
which he did as a pinch hitter in the game on Monday. And he breaks his bat as he grounds one out to Lindor. One pitch, one out. Did you blink? Well, don't blink for this because it's the Mets defense. Well, we don't show it because usually you don't need one when uh, DeGrom's pitching, but uh, there's been five catchers that have caught more than 100 innings. Jacob DeGrom, the lowest ERA is Tomas Nito at 1.53. The rest of the infield and the outfield of Smith, Nimmo, and Conforto. You know, the sample sizes are fairly small, but DeGrom's numbers with Nito behind the plate are unbelievable this year. 0.31 ERA with Nito catching. And it's only five starts, but still, that's that's pretty impressive. Jace Peterson takes a strike. I feel like I could keep Jake under three if I were catching. <laughs> He's saying you don't have to do a lot of framing. <laughs> he frames himself. The thing you have to learn how to do if you're catching Jacob Degrom is learn how to throw the ball around the horn when mm. on the strikeout. Very important. Well, you have to be good at the one, and you have to be good at the three. <laughs> And Peterson takes just inside two and one. Now since the start of his Cy Young run in 2018 he has the lowest ERA in the majors. Half swing by Peterson on the back foot slider two and two. Jake has two strikeouts already today that gives him fourteen hundred and ninety seven. When he gets to 1500, if he does it today, he'll be the second fastest ever to get to 1500. You Darvish got their fastest. Jake will be one start behind him. 2 2 coming. Slapped on the ground. Guillaume alone on the left side. High throw, but Alonzo stays on the bag, and they're two out. Well, the Brewers sitting in first place by six and a half games. In the National League Central, on the strength of their 11 game winning streak that got stopped on Sunday by the Pirates, Mets handed them a second straight loss on Monday, but that win streak was the second longest in franchise history. Milwaukee, far and away favored to win that NL Central now and get to the postseason for a fourth consecutive year. The three straight years is already a franchise record. Here's Keston Hira. Here is struck out four times in the game on Monday all four on fastballs. And we see the numbers kind of ugly right now for a guy who had a terrific rookie year two years ago. And chases a slider and it's one and one. We mentioned that the Brewers picked up Rowdy Telez from Toronto for a couple of pitchers. And that gives them another first base option if here here it continues to struggle. They had Dan Vogelbach, but then he hurt himself, and looks like he's not coming back anytime soon from a hamstring injury. Tellez is like a Vogelbach light. Yeah. I mean, you need to have one behemoth on your bench, right? One, two coming. And a little tapper back to DeGrom. Jake takes care of that. Three ground ball outs for DeGrom in that second inning. And a 1 1 game at City Field. Today's City Community Home Runs fan of the game is Regina from Atlantic City. Go to SNY.TV slash CHR to enter. Is there another Atlantic City other than New no. Jersey? No. I mean, there are two ocean cities, right? You got New Jersey and Maryland, but Atlantic City is Atlantic City. Did you hear the band do Springsteen's Atlantic City? Version no, of it. I oh. haven't. Whoa. Unbelievable. Luis Guillorme lays off first pitch curveball from Corbin Burns. So three straight left hand hitters, and Burns has thrown a first pitch curve to all three McNeil, Conforto, and now Guillorme. Guillorme over the last six games, seven for 16. That's a 438 clip. Just been ringing out line drives all over the place. And he hits that one sharply, but down to the third baseman. And Arias throws him out, one away. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to City Field. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem special check and offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. What's the temperature in the ballpark today? I mean, outside? 
It's very steamy, very humid. 93. I, I feel very comfortable. Well, you should feel comfortable. It's about 115 in here. This is right at your temperature. What do you think of this temperature? It's perfect for my body, Gary. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm 25 again. <laughs> It's like giving your cortisone That's shot. Right, exactly. <laughs> Here's Tomas Nito hitting eighth in the order. I mean, I would take these 95 degree days 150 times a year. So, can you envision yourself someday being like in Arizona or? Arizona's a little dry. Okay. I like the humidity. Very fond of the humidity. I know that puts me on an island, like Bora Bora, maybe. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, closer to some of your kids. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nito's second game since coming back from the injured list. Played game one on Sunday, went one for three with an RBI. And he lines one for a base hit in the right center. Trying to cut it off is Garcia, and he'll hold Nito to a single. Well, Nito continues his fine hitting. And now Jacob DeGrom will come to bat. Uh, really underrated the job that Tomas Nito has done as a backup catcher. Seems to always mix in a knock on his starts. Breaking ball down and away goes with it. Hit it right on the nose. You know Tomas has really improved himself as a hitter using his um, off site hitting coach yeah. Lorenzo Garmendia. And two of the Brewers who are both having terrific years, Willie Adamas and Omar Narvaez, also use yeah. Lorenzo, who was uh, Mookie Betts's guy, among others. Here's DeGrom taking up an away ball one, but it, you know, it just shows you the value of finding somebody who can who can speak to you, speak to you, and believes in you. I mean, I mean every hitting coach wants to put you in the right place, and they might say the exact same thing in a different way, and it's the guy who makes the connection. Who can, you know, spark the fire, and it seems to have done that for Nito. Degrom hitting 387, and he takes backdoor cutter for a strike, and it's one and one. Remember, all of these guys that play every day, they were all great hitters at some point. Some continue to be great hitters, and some are still trying to find their way. You know, it's difficult sometimes, though, when you've got an outside hitting guy, and then you've got your hitting coaches. Ken Rosenthal wrote about this the other day it, it in reference to uh, to Adamus more than anything else yeah. and Garmendia and he said it's, it's an evolving process with some of these teams getting the hitting coaches together with the outside guy to make sure the same message is being laid down Un unless it's a different message and that, right. that always becomes uh, a little bit tumultuous. Well that's what you don't want you, you can't have mixed messages. So DeGrom trying to bunt for a base hit. Now he's got a one and two count. And the curveball away, two and two. You know, the thing about Kenny Rosenthal's article, but we all, all love Kenny, is that how Adamas came to be with that hitting coach is that in the World Series, he was standing on second base. Luki Betts came up to him and said, You know, you should be one of the best players in the game, <laughs> but we've got to take care of that hitting part. I'm going to take you to a guy that. I'll t I know a guy that you should be around. And he said after the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> DeGrom lines one caught by Peterson and scrambling back is Nito. So another bullet off the bat of DeGrom but this one's the second out. Let's head to Steve Gelbs whose report today is brought to you by Impractical Jokers. Steve. Gary Brandon Nimmo leading off the game for the Mets today with a double and as you guys have mentioned he's been a spark plug in the few games he's been back for this team. Speaking with Luis Rojas though he also said there's a, a tangible benefit to the guys behind Nimmo when Nimmo leads off a game. You saw in that first at bat he took two very borderline pitches and by doing so in a way he sets the strike zone for the day because he's going to take those borderline pitches sometimes they'll be called a strike sometimes they'll be called a ball but the guys behind him will then know do they need to expand their zone or can they shrink it a little bit going into today's game with this umpire. Mm. Assuming today's umpire is consistent. That's true. <laughs> yeah, Quinn Wilcox's a good umpire. This this whole crew is is top notch. I don't know a lot about no woman, no cry, Marley, but the other three I know. Eric Backus is the fifth umpire. He's filling in at first base with the doubleheader today. Nick Marley will have the plate in the nightcap. 
Nimmo lined a double to left center and scored the Mets run in the first inning. And he gets that cutter and pulls it foul, and it's nothing and two. Well, most days Corbin Burns would lead the Spectrum Mobile high speed pitch, but this is a DeGrom day. That's a that's a shame. Throw 98 and can't even get the Spectrum Mobile. Is there a prize associated with winning the Spectrum Mobile high speed pitch competition? Well, there's got to be. You would never have an advertisement like that without a prize for not only the players, but also the broadcasters. <laughs> that's that's classic, Ronnie. Nimmo down on strikes, third strike out for Burns. That was straight out of the Fran Healy school. Well done. One one after two. <laughs> Thousand fans will receive a Jacob Degrom replica jersey from Geico and the Mets host the Pirates. Get your tickets directly from the source at Mets.com/tickets. We go to the third inning of this seven inning game. Mets are playing their ninth doubleheader of the season already. Mm. By far the most of any team in the majors. Nobody else played more than five. Jackie Bradley leads off in the third and takes up and away from DeGrom. Five. They've had five in 19 days. And it's the first time since 1978 that a team has played nine doubleheaders before the All Star break. Don't know to Bradley. Mets have split six doubleheaders this year, swept the other two, so they've done well. They've gone 10 and 6 in their doubleheader game. Bradley pulls one on the ground. Pete knocks it down. DeGrom gets over to cover, and the backhand flip is in time. And they get the out on Bradley. It was a little casual. Ball came up a little on Pete, catches him on the wrist, keeps it to the side of him, gets it with the glove, backhanded toss. Watch DeGrom. Not only pushes off on that bag, he's got such great speed and long strides. Pushes off that bag back into fair territory to get out of the way of the runner. That was always a key. Push off and back into fair territory so you give a lane to the runner. Jackie Bradley was not lollygagging. I would have thought that was going to be a much yeah. closer play, but it wasn't. It's Corbin Burns who can swing the bat a little bit. Bailing out as he takes a strike. We'll step in the bucket there. It was 100, Gary. Burns has five hits this year, three RBIs. Lifetime 212 hitter. I mean, he's stepping into the third base dugout. Yeah, the first time I faced Randy Johnson, I was all over the bucket. It's like this guy throws 100 and he doesn't, not sure where it's going yet. Funny to watch. This is the way I used to hit in Little League against the uh, the big hairy 12 year old. <laughs> Kid riding his motorcycle to the game. Yeah, Kelly Leak. <laughs> and he goes down on strikes. Third strikeout for DeGrom. Opposing pitchers are now 0 for 20 with 16 strikeouts against DeGrom. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. Well, the Brewers have struggled with breaking balls, and DeGrom has, you know, been just awesome at getting people out with breaking balls. Then on the other hand, the Brewers have struggled against high velocity this year. Their second lowest OPS in the National League against fastballs 98 and above. So by those standards, Jake should have his own way, but there's nothing given, and certainly he found that out with Luis Arias uh, Arias in the first inning. He homered. This time he pops up. And it's Door to make the catch with Guillaume pantomiming. Nine in a row retired by DeGrom after the home run. 1 1 game. All stars of the past at Crane Pool. John Stearns, four time All Star. Bad dude. Darrell was a seven time All Star as a Met. Bartolo Colon, who went to the All Star game in 2015. Still pitching. He's down in Mexico. He was an all-star a few times. It was impossible to get to, to be an all-star on the 80s teams. You had Keith, Gary, Dwight, and Straw were a lock every year. That's why I was smiling when I saw John Stearns four-time all-star. And, you know, John Stearns was a terrific player. But he played on some teams where there wasn't a lot of, you know, wasn't a lot of other talents. Well, what do you think of the rule that every team should have a representative? I, like think, it? I think it's great. Yeah, me too. But. I'm the same. But. 
They have to be wearing their own uniforms. Oh, Major League wow. Baseball, what are you thinking with these generic uniforms? No, the whole point is to have everybody wear their own uniforms. Uh, That's why you have somebody from every team. Don't even go down that road. I Gary. mean, I come on. Be, I don't want to be fired before the second game. Come on. <laughs> I didn't know that that's a firing offense. <laughs> I would have been fired a long time ago if that were true. <laughs> oh, let's not reinvent it. It's so much fun. See, the introductions are great, yeah, right? When you see right. everybody in their uniforms along the foul lines. And they get to wear, like, maybe special shoes or right. something a little different to spice it up. Or if you know, you're Ronald Acuna, the same thing. Right. You wear the batting practice jerseys yeah. for the for the home run derby. That's great. But for the game, that's the great thing about baseball. You don't have to wear generic uniforms because you know you don't have to figure out who to pass the ball to. <laughs> Francisco Lindor blooped a single to left to drive in the Mets run in the first inning. Tom Smith and Pete Alonso to follow against Corbin Burns, who's been anything but sharp in the early going. And he leaves that change up away and Lindor stopped the swing. It's one and one. Burns last year finished sixth in the Cy Young balloting despite making only nine starts. They didn't put him in the rotation until three weeks into the season and then he had a season cut short. Good curveball and it's one and two. He didn't get to pitch in the postseason for Milwaukee because he had an oblique injury. So a lot of the pitchers that gave the Mets trouble there for a while saw a lot of curveballs. Well, these last two pitchers are more power. You don't see as many curveballs, but maybe after that swing from Lindor, you might see a few more from Burns. Yeah, he's mixing in more curveballs than usual. He's a 15% curveball guy. He's probably a little more than that so far today. I mean, that's a real 12 to 6 hard curveball. Off it's strike three as he went around, and Narvaez will make the throw to complete the put out. So that's strikeout number four for Burns. It's now time for a word from the Impractical Jokers. Let's go, you absolute pieces of garbage! <laughs> All new episodes of Impractical Jokers return next Thursday at 10 on True TV. So one out of the home third. Dom Smith coming up. Dom was called out on strikes his first time up in a backdoor cutter. Braves just went in front of the Pirates four to three as they play in the sixth in Pittsburgh. Atlanta trying to avoid getting swept by the Pirates. Abraham Almonte a two run single to put Atlanta in front. Pirates have won three straight and they're coming to City Field tomorrow and the Mets are playing seven straight games against Pittsburgh. They're playing their best baseball right now. The Pittsburgh Pirates getting a little better pitching. Dom lofts one out to right field. Garcia back should have plenty of room. Two out. Well, the Pirates are a rebuilding team, and they're going to have fits and starts. They've got two really good players in Brian Reynolds and Adam Frazier, who are reliable, everyday players. Reynolds in center and, and uh, Frazier at second. Now the question is, will they deal those guys away before the trading deadline? Yeah, right. Got to make somebody your cornerstone as you try to turn the page there. Yeah, Reynolds a little younger than Frazier, so Frazier might be the guy who brings back the most. He's an all-star this year. He's getting over 300, 325 right. coming into today. There's Alonzo at a base hit his first time up. He nubs one to the right side here on the backhand and the good flip to Burns who has his first one two three inning of the day after three in this seven inning game tied at one Doug and Andy discuss the trade deadline and what the Mets may do plus a look back at the first half of the season on the latest Shea anything podcast presented by Verizon subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts Christian Yelich up for the second time against Jacob DeGrom. And DeGrom pours a fastball over first strike. Jake is not throwing 100 with regularity today. His average fastball velocity in his last start was 98.7, which was the second lowest for him this season. This is with a slider one and one. 
Coming into the day he had thrown 179 pitches 100 miles an hour or more. Maybe he's thrown a couple today. And Yelich with a check swing foul ball on the changeup, and it's one and two. I thought that would be a pitch he would use against Yelich this afternoon. Why? You can see the 100 plus pitches. Um, Tyler McGill used it to great effectiveness on in game one. McGill's changeup was a big key to his success. Well, DeGrom has thrown more 100 mile an hour pitches than everybody else combined in, among the starters in the majors. There's a knee high changeup or a slider for a strike. And he gets Yelich for his fourth strikeout. The slider? No, you had it right. I think changeup. it was the changeup, Gary. So he is not at his most overpowering today. Gave up the leadoff home run to Arias on a fastball in the first inning. And Adamas takes a strike. Willie Adamas struck out his first time up. You know, there was this conversation before the game today about DeGrom and his status for the rest of this week. With the rain out last night, you know, the plan had been for him to pitch last night, then pitch Sunday, the last game before the break, and Jake was going to then miss the All Star game, maybe not even go. But because it got rained out, there's really no other start for him before the break. But then Luis Ross started floating the idea of pitching him Sunday for a short stint. Strike three called. He gets Adamas looking back to back strikeouts for Jake, and that's five for the day. But I can't imagine that they're going to do that. I can't even imagine that they're going to consider bringing him back to pitch an inning or two on Sunday, given all the things he's gone through this year. That was strikeout number 1500 of DeGrom's career, second fastest ever to reach 1500. Took you, Darvish, 197 starts. Jake does it in start number 198. Now, after a brief smile, he refocuses to face Omar Narvaez. And he takes a fastball at 101. So there's the triple digits. Uh, he struck out Adamas on 100. So sometimes within a game, you start, you, you don't feel great to start, but then it comes. And, and slider and, pulled foul. And as far as the conversation, uh, if you're a manager or a coaching staff, you have to stay away from down the road. He's got to start today. Concentrate on the start today. After the start today, then I'll be happy to answer your questions. You have to answer the future before he's even made the start. Silly. And he strikes him out on high heat. Well, you talked about getting loose on a hot day, Ronnie. Looks like he's getting loose. He strikes out the side in the fourth inning. 1,501 now for Jake. Home for a thing in a 1 1 game. First game of a day night doubleheader, so this one's scheduled for seven. Jacob DeGrom appears to have hit his stride, striking out the side on the fourth and getting up to 101 miles an hour. Jeff McNeil leads off the home fourth against Corbin Burns, who's retired five in a row. McNeil struck out his first time up. That was a big one for Burns. That's at second and third and one out with a run home in the first inning. And Burns was able to strike out McNeil and get through that inning without any further scoring. McNeil, Conforto, and Guillaume, three left handed bats against Burns in the fourth. And McNeil fouls off the cutter. It's one and one. Robert Burns has pitched brilliantly this year. 2.41 ERA coming in, but the Brewers are only 8 and 8 in his starts. Brewers were a sub 500 team before Willie Adamas got here. Curveball drilled to center field. Back goes Bradley, easing back. And he makes the catch in front of the warning track. So one out. Here's your fan choice poll brought to you by Impractical Jokers. Do you, who do you think is poised to have a big second half this season? We 
give you three choices Conforto, Lindor, and McNeil. Hmm. Vote at SNY.TV slash vote game. Go at it. I love how that first vote always looms so large. <laughs> I think it uh, produces unfair bias, to tell you the truth. <laughs> well, now they've all been at 100%, so now you can start fresh. <laughs> Conforto takes another first pitch curveball outside. Michael grounded out his first time up. Change up by Burns and it's one and one. Surprised that the Milwaukee doesn't have a shift, and certainly they know their pitcher much better than I do. But with all those cut fastballs that he throws, you'd think that Conforto would be more apt to pull the ball to the right side, which he did in his first at bat, but right at the second baseman. Off the end of the bat foul, and it's one and two. So how's our poll doing so far? Well, Lindor has a majority so far. Is there a rank choice voting in this uh, particular poll? 33% um, each would be a nice way to go, that everyone thinks they're all going to get there. I know who my vote would be for. It wouldn't be any of those three. It would be Dom Smith. Whoa. I, I watched him for two months last year. Yeah. Never okay. take a bad at bat, and I think he's on the verge of getting to that point. You? To your um, to your mouth, to God's ears. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I didn't even strike three called. Conforto gets caught looking on a cutter, and that's five strikeouts now for Burns, and now he's gotten in a groove. He's retired seven straight. Well, I I, th I think I'm going to go with Conforto. A couple of reasons. I think uh, I've seen him go through stretches where he gets red hot and you can't get him out, and I'm expecting that to happen. Uh, secondly, uh, he's coming off an injury and he hasn't got his timing yet. And even more importantly, it's imperative in this year it's to free agent year to, to, to yeah. for him to put up some numbers. Yeah. Here's Guillaume who grounded out to third base his first time up. Luis getting the start at third base today. Let's say Peraza was in the lineup last night to face the lefty Brett Anderson. He'll probably play the second game. Luis Rojas said before the game, probably not on J.D. Davis this weekend. They were thinking about maybe bringing him back this weekend, but rather than bring him back for a couple of days and have the All Star break, they'd rather get him some more reps in all probability. Yorma gets tied up badly on that cutter and one around. It's one and one. But right now, with the way Guillaume and VR and Peraza are playing, there's no need to rush anybody. Again, the benefits of being a first place team. And that one came right inside and uh, took a chunk out of Guillaume's bat. He'll need a new one. I don't think I've ever seen that exact thing happen before. I mean, it came inside and just cracked the bat in half without the ball going anywhere. <laughs> it just stuck on the bat. <laughs> Clank. That's when you know you got some nasty action on that cutter. It's made him look bad a couple of times on that pitch. And now he tries to backdoor it and misses two and two. Well, it's a seven inning game. Both these pitchers have pitched to reasonable pitch counts. Both, I'm sure, have their eye on going seven innings in this game, even though it's a hot day. Got another whole game to play tonight. Well, seven innings worth anyway. 2 2 coming and he struck him out that cutter was too much for Guillaume six strikeouts for Burns he's retired eight straight one one after four. Ninety three degrees and one towering over all the rest. 
That reminds me of the Dwight Gooden poster on the west side near the Lincoln Tunnel. Yep. Uh, all those years on about 36th Street or so. An enormous side of the building. It was so cool. Well, Jacob DeGrom did not throw a pitch 100 miles an hour or harder in the first three innings. He threw three of them in the fourth inning when he struck out the side. He's now retired 12 in a row after the leadoff home run by Luis Arias in the first. Avacio Garcia on cue swings at the first pitch. That's three at bats in this series. He swung at the first pitch on all three. Garcia, when he was in Detroit, was kind of a protege of Miguel Cabrera. And Miguel Cabrera is a guy that swears, I'd be ready to swing. First pitch might be the best pitch you get. Well, he was kind of the uh, Cabrera look alike and size alike. He just hasn't been the play alike as he drives one deep but foul down the right field line. Garcia has bounced around a little bit the last few years now with his fourth team. He's a good player, though. He's a solid player. Yeah. He might not be a star player. No, but he's, he's not Miguel player. Cabrera, but then yeah. who is? Yeah. That's good. He's 30 years old now. 20 home runs in 2019 for Tampa Bay at 282 that year. Brooke has batted and grounded out to short his first time up. Jake has struck out six today. It's looped into shallow center, and that's going to be caught by a diving Brandon Nimmo. Nemo came a long, long way playing a very deep center field and makes a tumbling catch to Rob Garcia of a base hit to start the fifth inning. Well, we're right in the middle of a game where all of these plays are so important. He did not go back. He came in straight away and then cradled it. The most difficult part of this play he was going to get there is when he landed. Could he keep the ball and like a wide receiver wraps that left arm underneath his glove to cradle it. That's very nice. Catch, no catch. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So one out and nobody on. 13 in a row retired by DeGrom. And now Jace Peterson swings over a slider, nothing in one. Peterson grounded out to third base his first time up. So DeGrom reached 1,500 strikeouts in the last inning. Second fastest ever to do it. And Tim Britton points this out. Tim reminds us that he got his 1,000th strikeout, his final batter of the 2018 season, which means that since then he struck out 500 batters in 361 innings. 500 strikeouts in 361 innings over the last two plus seasons. Crazy good. 0 2 coming. And he goes back door and misses to Peterson 1 and 2. I remember that pitch to Ozzy Albies like it was yesterday. I don't know why. I guess because it was a thousand, and you try to want to remember milestones for guys you cover. It was the capper of his first Cy Young season. Two and two now to Peterson. That was the year. Every time he was in a tough spot, he dialed up a backdoor slide with left-handed hitters, and that's the pitch he got Albies on for his 1,000th strikeout. Two two coming. And Peterson flies one to right center long run back in the gap for Nemo near the wall and it's out of here. Jace Peterson goes deep for his fourth home run of the year and the second home run of the day against Jacob DeGrom. And the Brewers go back in front two to one. Well it just tells you one how good these hitters are at times making adjustments the first two sliders thrown to Jace Peterson he had a half a swing completely confused and then one that wasn't as good and found the middle of the plate Peterson was right on it he's been one of Milwaukee's hottest hitters coming into this game in the last 12 games. Well, Peterson well traveled Mets have seen plenty of him back to his days with the Braves. See how he reacted. Usually when you see Jake DeGrom he'll turn around slightly. That one was a really jerk of the neck as you can't believe that you left one over the middle and as soon as he hit it you're just hoping it comes back and play. First time this year DeGrom's allowed two home runs in a game. He had allowed just four home runs through his first 14 starts but now two this afternoon. One and two to Keston Hira. Here's our overhead look. At the home run by Peterson keeps those hands back and hits that slider about a foot in front of that plate. And you could hear the, the yelling and screaming and language from the Brewers dugout. 
Here at down on strikes and that seven for DeGrom his second out of the inning. Now Peterson's getting a chance to play because Colton Wong is hurt and he's taking full advantage of it. Hey listen there we heard on the bench just how fired up the Brewers were and we never talk about this because we always concentrate on DeGrom. Do you know what it's like for a team to go into a start against this young man and try to somehow muster up some offense and when they do that's the result you get on the bench. Uh, Jackie Bradley fouls off a fastball. Bradley grounded out his first time up. Well, Corbin Burns for the second time has been given the lead. First one was short lived. Slider pulled foul and it's 0 2 to Bradley. DeGrom is due to turn it back in the bottom of the fifth. And you get to that point again, right? You're in yeah. the fifth inning of a seven inning game, which is like the seventh inning of a nine inning game. Do you think about hitting for your pitcher when you're down by a run? Hit one of the hardest balls in this game for the Mets. Mm -hmm. And his first step bat for an out. It certainly changes the equation <laughs> somewhat. Swing and a miss. Got him with a changeup. Bradley down on strikes to end the inning. But Jace Peterson's home run puts the Brewers back in front, two to one, going to the bottom of the fifth. Watch SNY Mets games on any device. Just visit SNY.tv or download the NBC Sports app today for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Well, Mets are still uh, undecided on a pitcher for game two. It might well be Robert Stock, but that has not been announced. So here's your city probable, not probables, for game two. Brett Anderson, who remarkably has made 198 starts in his regular season major league career, but none of them against the Mets, will face the Mets in game two. It'll be the 30th MLB team he faces when he faces the Mets. He did start against the Mets right. in the National League Division Series as a Dodger in 2015, and he got beat up that day at City Field, but never in the regular season. Tomas Nito at the plate, and Jacob DeGrom is on deck. So even in the bottom of the fifth in a seven inning game, no thought about batting for DeGrom, trailing two to one. Nito had a base hit his first time up. And he takes a cut around the corner for a strike from Burns, nothing and one. Now Burns had a one nothing lead in the first inning, and promptly the Mets got it back. Nimmo doubled, and Lindor singled him home. Now Burns has a lead for the second time in the fifth inning of a seven inning game. And Nito foul tips the cutter, and it's nothing and two. Nito's hit was the last base runner for the Mets in the second. Since then, Burns has retired eight straight. DeGrom had retired 13 in a row before Jace Peterson's home run put the Brewers back in front. Burns is on a strike throwing roll. Bounce to the left side. Short hop, oh. knocked down by Arias, but he can't pick it cleanly. He went for the do or die hop, and he didn't do. Sometimes you make an athletic error. Sometimes you make an error in choice. There's no reason for him to play an impossible bounce with Nito running. He could have played that into a nice big hop, fired it the first for the out. Just a, a lack of judgment for Urias there. So it's an error on Urias. That is his 15th error of the season. Played some seconds, some short, and more recently has been the everyday third baseman. So now DeGrom up there, and we'll see if he's asked to bunt. He has not had a sacrifice this year. He has 12 hits. Lined out his first time up. Urias creeping in as DeGrom squares and lines the bunt. It's caught, and Nito scrambles back. So that's the first out. It's a low swing. Well, <laughs> it's because it's a seven inning game. Um, it's because you want to get this game tied uh, before you run out of time. And one of the things that you try to do when you bunt, and listen, Jacob's a good bunter. He just hasn't bunted enough this year. So you want to put the bat at the top of the strike zone. So if it's above that bat, you never reach up for it. And that, that pitch was just too high to get down. He knows it. 
So the tying run at first with one out for Brandon Nimmo who doubled left center and scored the Mets only run in the first then he struck out in the second. And Nimmo takes one off the outside corner for ball one. Brandon's fifth game since coming off the injured list eight hits and 20 at bats since his return so he has not given an inch. He was scheduled to have the night off last night against the lefty. It'll be interesting to see if he gets to play in game two of the doubleheader. And he lays off the change up and he did not swing. It's 2 0. Oh. Better than a 2 to 1 strikeout, strike yeah. to ball ratio. He's walked 15 batters now this season, but none today. Since that uh, 58 strikeout no walk streak to begin the year. One of the rare times today he's been behind in the count. Arbaia is setting up inside. And Nimmo yanks that cutter foul two and one. You know Gary I was thinking that because McNeil and Conforto have gotten off to a tough start coming off the IL it was Brandon Nimmo who had the self awareness to say to the Mets he needed a couple of more games he just didn't feel 100 percent right and boy talk about self awareness right and it wasn't about resolving the injury issue the hand problem that had been plaguing him that was not the issue but he just felt like his timing wasn't yeah. right it's hard to know where that line is where you feel like you're ready to go but are you ready to contribute mm -hmm. you know uh, I, I bet you for uh, Brandon if you talk to him it, it would be about pitch recognition strikes on awareness if he has that all's good. First three ball count since the first inning for Burns. And Nimmo pops one up. Retreating is Adamas. Coming on, he call him off. Is it Yelich and it drops? He's got to play at second, though, and they get the force on Nito. So Yelich called off Adamas, didn't catch it, but then had the presence of mind to recover and get the force for the second out. Well, a sloppy inning for the Brewers. Urias with the first play. And this ball, when it was in the air, looked like trouble right from the start. And the ball just drifted on Yelich, but was able to make the play. There's nothing really Nito can do there. You can't go halfway because if he makes that catch, he could throw you out at first and mm. double you up. There's nowhere to go. So Nemo replaces Nito at first on the 7 4 fielder's choice. And Al Lindor, who drove in the Mets run with a bloop single in the first, then struck out in the third. Nemo has two steals this year, and we talked earlier about Burns and his trouble with the stolen base. Just off the end of his glove as Adamas covers his head. Jackie Bradley Jr. coming in to help. Bradley immediately is yelling 2 2 2 because he knew there was a play there. And no panic. I mean, the numbers should give you a good opportunity here for Nimmo if he gets a jump to steal. Give Lindor a chance with a two out hit to knock you in. It's interesting. You said this earlier, Ronnie, and it's really true for a guy who has trouble with the stolen base. Burns actually has a pretty good move. <laughs> Yes. It's just the laborious nature of the way he releases the ball to the plate that gives base runners a jump. And that's a long time in right. his delivery coming out of the stretch. He did use a slide step once earlier in the game. It's pretty predictable too after he throws a pitch to the plate. He usually throws over once or twice and then back to pitching. Two out. I mean the, the real elite teams in the game are starting to use the speed of the game to their advantage. Door takes a cutter for a strike one and one. 
Well, Lindor was at first base in the first inning. He never took off. Now Nemo at first base in the fifth inning. And has yet to try it. That's a stolen only 26 bases through their first 81 games. That puts them 12th in the National League in steals. Those are the numbers coming in for Corbin Burns. Coming off seven and a third stellar innings against the Pirates his last time out. 82 innings, only three home runs. And that throw in the dirt, and Hira has to pull it out. He'll get a new ball here. Two throws, that one in the dirt. You'd have to think at this point, you won't see another throw from Burns over. And if you're Nimmo, can you anticipate that a breaking ball might be thrown? That'll give you some extra time, too. All the little nuances of stealing a base. Nimmo runs. The throw by Narvaez is a good one. And Nimmo's tagged out to end the inning. Two to six on the caught stealing. Omar Narvaez with a perfect throw. And that's how the bottom of the fifth comes to an end. Nemo caught for the second time this year. Two to one Brewers after five. Sixth inning, two to one Milwaukee. Corbin Burns will bat and takes a strike from Jacob DeGrom. Jacob has yet to throw a pitch out of the stretch in this game. He's faced 17 batters, retired 15, and given up two solo home runs. Struck out eight. Nothing even hinting at a walk. But the home runs right now have him behind. Jordan Burns uh, does, doesn't feel to me like he really just wants to even swing the bat. And he can hit a little bit. Five hits this year. Foul ball. Watch Nimmo start uh, at first base. Just didn't get a clean getaway. Kind of just spun out there with his right and left foot. Looked in. And it wasn't enough to be safe at second base. Good tag by Adamas. Good throw by Narvaez. Jake handles the comebacker. Takes care of Burns. One out in the sixth. Let's check in with the studio. Gary Apple has a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Gary. <laughs> well, you never know, Gary. Orlando Arcia playing for the Braves yep. as we watch the Brewers. The former Brewer who's playing left field for the Braves. They've had trouble replacing the uh, the bat of Marcelo Zuna, and so Arcia the latest to get a chance. Another former Brewer had a really good game the other day. Did you see Willie Peralta? Yes. Pitched a gem of a game. I didn't even for know if he was still in the league. Yeah, well, he was. I mean, he won 17 yep. games for the for the Brewers a few years back. They've got another pretty good Peralta now, Freddie. But uh, Willie resurfaced with uh, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Big pitch here. Arias hit the home run, leading off the game. His 11th of the year. Popped up his second time up. Mets and Brewers have both been good in one run games this year. Mets are 17 and 14. The Brewers are 15 and 9. Three straight trips to the postseason for Craig Council squad. They've been really good in one run games the last few years, and having Josh Hader in their bullpen certainly has helped in that regard. But that's uh, that's an awfully good record the last four years. Hader for a long time was a two inning guy. Now he's strictly a ninth inning 
reliever for the Brewers, but he's a great weapon any way you slice it. Swing and a miss, a big cut by Reyes sent him down to a knee. So Jake, after running his first three ball count of the game, does that. After a guy has got you for a home run and you're behind in the count, sometimes you're reluctant to throw that good fastball, but it gets Urias to his knees. Three two coming. And a foul ball. Fastball running in on him. So the change of the game plan for DeGrom. Very rarely does he throw a fastball into right handed hitters. And that's something I think in the second half you'll see him do more. Rios lines one to center field for a base hit. So Rios has his second hit of the day. Takes a wide turn and he'll go back. And a 3 2 slider that time and picks up just the third hit against DeGrom. And now for the first time, Jake will have to pitch out of the stretch. Big leg kick. This is a good slider right on the corner, but Urias covers it. And that's why I think he's going to have to pitch more inside. Hard for me to say that to a guy who's been almost perfect in the first half. But that's a good pitch, not a mistake. And he gets a base hit. Hard out of the box. Was thinking too the entire way, but hustled by Nimmo stopped him at first. And now Christian Yelich has been called out on strikes in both at bats today. And he hits a double play ball right to McNeil. Lindor with the turn. Side retire. Four six three on the double play gets Degrom through the top of the sixth. Now we go to the bottom of the sixth in a seven inning game with the Mets down by a run. Play at first base. Look and listen. He's out. <laughs> Close play though. Well, Mets have six outs to play with. You've got two of the best relievers in baseball looming in Devin Williams and Josh Hader. Williams is up in the bullpen now. Burns at 71 pitches through five innings. Will take on the Mets third time through the batting order. And this is where teams have gotten to Burns this year. He has paid a third time through the order penalty. Lindor was at the plate when Nimmo was caught stealing to end the fifth. And Francisco takes a strike. Smith and Alonzo to follow. First two times through the order, opponents are hitting 155 against Burns with a 420 OPS. Third time through, 361 with a 906 OPS. And that's the prevailing philosophy in baseball today as the pitchers pay a penalty third time through. It's not always as harsh as that. Mm. See if the Mets can take advantage, but that's why they have Williams up in the bullpen as the changeup misses outside one and one. I have a little theory about this, Gary. Guys that start out in the bullpen have a certain bullpen mentality that they bring out to the starting rotation, and that is all out. For two hours. That's what you're going to get from Burns and from Woodruff. So, last year's National League Rookie of the Year, Devin Williams, he of the Airbender up in the bullpen. That's the uh, nickname for his changeup, which was devastating last year as a rookie. It's been good this year, but not quite as dominating. As a fan, you'll enjoy watching it. I don't know if the Mets are going to enjoy watching it. Well, they have not seen Devin mm -hmm. Williams before, except on video, so. Be a different experience for him. That's haven't played the Brewers since 2019. And the fastball off the plate to Lindor, two and two. So when I think of these pitchers that have kind of the relief mentality, they're all out on every pitch. There's no place to add on later in the game, third time through the lineup. They've already added everything they have. Lindor drove in the Mets run with a bloop single in the first. Mets have had just one hit since the first inning. 
And Lindor takes strike three called cutter outside corner at the knees and you rarely see Francisco that upset about a call. Strikeout number seven for Burns who made a perfect pitch. Quinn Wolcott is given a little extra off that outside corner on that cutter. And let's see if he gets a little extra here. Boy that's there. I don't know about the height of it. Maybe Lindor was arguing at the height of that pitch but tight game big at bat. These are the kind of reactions you'll get when you're busting it to try to get on base. And is as large an outburst as I've seen from Lindor since he came to the Mets. Here's Smith, and Dom takes a cutter for a strike. So maybe he wasn't mad at the umpire. Maybe he just mad at himself for not pulling the trigger. Maybe. Dom has taken a call third strike and flight out 0 for 2. Started the day with a seven game hitting streak. Tried to bunt with one strike in the first inning, and they're shifting against him with one strike here. He takes slowing in and it's a ball and a strike. Burns has struck out seven. He hasn't walked a batter. He's given up a run on four hits. Three of those four hits came the first four batters he faced. Dom pops one foul. That'll go back out of play. One and two. Instead, he died of change ups for Don in this at bat. 26 year old Corbin Burns out of St. Mary's College in California. Better known for their Australian pedigree basketball players. That's right. Well, you know your basketball, Gary. And you know St. Mary's. I've actually done a game from St. Mary's. You have. Yeah. Little Jim, very intimidating. Moraga, California. That's right. And Dom goes down swinging on the cutter. Back to back strikeouts for Burns, and he's got eight. Two down in the sixth. Well, he's got these Mets left handed hitters on the seesaw. Change up running away, and then cutter down and in. Balls both starting in the middle of the plate. One makes a right turn, one makes a left. So Craig Council may be faced with an interesting decision here, right? First game of a doubleheader. Burns had a very low pitch count. If he gets through the sixth unscathed, he's never had a complete game in his career. Does he go to his great left-handed weapon, Hater, in the seventh, or does he let Burns try and finish the game? I mean, I don't know if he's ever seen him this dominant. He's gotten better as the game's gone along. Here's Alonzo. Takes curveball down for ball one. It's one of those kind of games that you're looking for your big guy, the big fella, one swing of the bat. Well the thing is if if Burns gets Alonzo then the Mets have three left handed bats due up in the seventh McNeil Conforto and Guillaume so that could affect Council's decision as well. Of course Pete can change that entire equation here he lays off that curveball and it's two and oh. Good call by James Hoy at first. Hmm. Boy I didn't see the, the, the head of the bat move that. Far that was that he could have called it. He certainly could. Yeah. Game two tonight. Maybe Robert Stock pitching for the Mets. Brett Anderson goes for the Brewers. 7 10 start coverage begins at 6 30 on SNY. Two one coming. And that curveball up and in forces Pete to vacate. Certainly no intent there. It was a curveball. So this is just the second three ball count of the day for Corbin Burns. Jeff McNeil would be next. Neither pitcher has walked about it today. Rahm has struck out eight. Burns has struck out eight. 
It's been exactly what you figured between these two ace starting pitchers. 3 1 coming. And Pete lines one to left center field for a base hit. It heads toward the gap and it goes to the wall. Alonzo standing with a two out double. Second hit of the day for Pete. Well, as we've seen before, Pete can sometimes be vulnerable to the high fastball, but when you're a pitcher who throws a cutter, that ball is going to be more down in the zone and away from Pete, and he handles it for the double. Let's need one more big hit. Jeff McNeil coming up. Chris Hook, the Brewers pitching coach, out to talk to Burns, who's only thrown 85 pitches. They have Devin Williams ready in the bullpen. And Williams, with that devastating changeup, is just as good against lefties as he is against righties. But they're not making the change here. We're going to get a pinch runner. It looks like Billy McKinney is going to run for Alonzo at second base, carrying that tying run. He can go into the outfield. Dom can come into first base. It's the right move. Give yourself the best shot. So Pete comes out. The issue you have here is that in the outfield, Yelich has a, a good arm, strong arm. Avasil Garcia and right field's got a very excellent arm, and Jackie Bradley Jr. might have one of the best arms in the game in center field. So here's McNeil who's gone 0 for 2 today struck out and fly out 0 for 5 in the series. McKinney the pinch runner for Alonzo at second with two out Mets down by a run in the sixth inning of a seven inning game. Adamas playing right behind McKinney so he can't get too far away. And McNeil rips one foul. Nothing in one. Well, McNeil clearly has not been himself, even at the start of the season before he got hurt, not driving in runs. He's got 10 RBIs this year and 150 at bats, and that's wild. 108 batting average with runners in scoring position. And McNeil tops one tough play Burns can't make a play and everybody's safe. Now there's no way that Burns or Urias was going to be able to play that ball in no man's land and McNeil's got himself an infield hit and the Mets have first and third with two out. Good breaking ball. Doing his best to get there but even if he had got it he should have stayed away from that and given third baseman a chance but. I think because of that play that might be all for Mr. Burns. Here comes Craig Council and he'll bring Devin Williams into the game to face Michael Conforto. So they tried to get Burns through the sixth inning. He struck out the first two batters but Alonzo's double and McNeil's infield hit give the Mets a chance. Williams coming in. We'll be right back to City Field. Now Michael Conforto doing some studying along with hitting coach Hugh Quattlebaum. They'll be facing Devin Williams for the first time. Devin Williams with the uh, air bending change up had a great rookie year last year. He's uh, he's been good but not great this year. I mean he gave up one earned run in 27 innings pitched. Uh, the one, the key for Conforto you can spend all your time trying to look at that pitch. It's almost like a screwball Gary. It's a very unusual pitch that no hitter has seen. So I think what you have to concentrate on if you're Conforto is that most of the pitches from Williams are going to be middle of the plate away. Throws his change up 61% of the time and it has tremendous movement. Do you almost want to try to not swing at the change up? Is that got to be part of your game? He plan? can throw it for a strike too. He's got great control of it uh, last year. This control of it this year, not as good. Tying run at third, go ahead run at first with two out. Good afford to hold for two today. And that first change up misses outside for ball one. And oh, by the way, he can throw 94, 95 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, he just doesn't do it that often. Yeah. Williams, 26 years old, a Missouri native. 
Not only did he win the rookie of the year last year, he finished seventh in the Cy Young balloting. That's how good he was despite throwing only 27 innings last year. 0.33 ERA as a rookie. And Conforto hits it hard, but just foul. Hira barely came off the bag, so if that was fair, it probably would have been an out. Funny, you don't see first baseman push off the bag very much anymore because of the shifts. So that ball down the line gets covered a little bit better. Also, uh, with a runner on first and ahead by a run, you don't want anything to go down the line double. That would that could score McNeil. McKinney, the tying run at third. McNeil at first with two down. All of this happening after two out and nobody on. And Conforto is hit by the pitch, and that'll load the bases. Was it in the strike zone? <laughs> He caught the elbow guard. It was pretty close, but it was off the plate, and he did make an effort to get out of the way. Yeah, he was just trying to throw that high hard one in to set up that next changeup. Never gets there because of the hit batter. So now the bases are loaded for Luis Guillorme. Guillorme is 0 for 2. He was overmatched by Burns' cutter his last time up. Corbin Burns, 87 pitches over five and two thirds, six hits, one run so far, no walks, eight strikeouts, a wild pitch. Seventh time Conforto's been hit by a pitch already this year. He's only had 152 at bats. If I was Guillaume, I'd be ready first pitch. Might be the only fastball you get. Base is loaded, two down. Guillaume, who, is a, who has had just one run batted in this season in 79 at bats, chance to get a big hit right now. And he takes the change up for a strike, nothing in one. I think that pitch is the best expression of what Williams can do. Yes. Both sides of the plate, tremendous movement on that one devastating pitch. Reminds me a little bit of Trevor Hoffman in that yeah. regard. Trevor, especially the second half of his career, relied so heavily on his channel. Grounded to the right side. Peterson in front of it. Throws out Giorme, and the Mets leave three. In the bottom of the sixth. On to the seventh and final inning, 2 1 Milwaukee. We go to the seventh inning in a seven inning game. Billy McKinney stays in the game in left field. Dom Smith moves to first base. Jacob deGrom going for the complete game. Willie Adamas leads off and tops the first pitch to third. Two hopper handled by Guillaume, and the quick throw gets Adamas one away. SNY play ball presented by Toyota is back looking to help local football leagues in need continue play in 2021 providing grants clinics and equipment donations right now we're accepting applications if you know a local football league in need apply today at SNY.tv slash play ball. Rom gave up a solo home run to Luis Arias in the first a solo home run to Jace Peterson in the fifth. Brewers lead two to one and Josh Hader that force of nature getting ready in the Milwaukee bullpen. Omar Narvaez is grounded on struck out over two. Change up off the plate for ball one. But coming into this game it was an interesting choice by Milwaukee right we've seen a lot of teams say. Well, let's put our real good pitcher in the second game. Mm. Uh, assure us that we're going to at least split. But they believed in their pitcher Burns to match zeros with Degrom, and he's he's bested him so far. And Jake's been very good today, but human. Third straight start, he's given up multiple runs. Four earned runs allowed in his first 12 starts. Seven now allowed in his last three. Behind on Narvaez, 2-0, and, oh, and he finds the inside corner. Jake looking for his second complete game of the season and the fifth of his career. And the Mets will have eight, nine, and one in the order coming up in the bottom of the inning against Hader. Nito, a pinch hitter, and then Nimmo. Two and two to Narvaez. 2 0 fastball he takes. 2 1 looking for that fastball again. He gets slider. Uh, 
they say Garcia is on deck. Nice flex one foul at 99 miles an hour. Jake hasn't walked a battery, struck at eight. Now for the season, has walked 11 and struck out 144. These are things with which I'm simply not familiar. Right. Closest to it was Brett Saberhagen. Saberhagen had a year in 1994 with the Mets. He walked 13 and struck out 154. Strikes out Narvaez with the slider, and that is nine strikeouts today for Jake. Second time he's gotten Narvaez. Just this great sequence once he got behind. Fastball inside corner, slider swinging, fastball up and away, fouled away, and came back with the slider down and in. So two out and now Garcia who is grounded out and then a pop fly to center that Nimmo made a nice tumbling catch on. Brewers have had just three base runners the Mets have had by far the better of the opportunities in this game. But it's a one run Milwaukee lead. As the first pitch slider bounces away. <laughs> Reason to smile he never bounces a pitch. <laughs> Coming up on the post game show. Gary Apple and Todd Zeal will have all the highlights, the interviews, the analysis coming up right after the game. W.B. Mason post game live. I mean, think about it for all of the sliders that DeBron has thrown this year, and he's thrown a ton. He has not thrown a wild pitch this year. It's a precision and power at its best. I was hoping he'd throw a strike first pitch because I haven't seen a hitter make. Three outs on three pitches in quite some time. Garcia would be the candidate for that. He loves to swing the bat. And he lines one into center, and the Brewers have their fourth hit of the day. So a two out single for Garcia. And that'll bring Jace Peterson to the plate for another turn. Center cut fastball on it is Garcia ahead in the count. So now Peterson who's provided the difference in this game. A long home run to center field in the fifth inning his fourth home run. And only the sixth allowed by DeGrom this year. So the home run by Peterson is on a slider found the middle of the plate. So first pitch fastball here to Peterson let's see how he approaches him. In this at bat. And right after him with a fastball, one and one. Full triangle shift on against Peterson. Twenty-five thousand collective umpires here. It's interesting, though, Ronnie. You mentioned um, the, the fastball he threw into a right-hand batter in the last inning, and that was an arm side fastball. And yep. you just don't see a lot of those. Another fastball in as he's unloading the bucket here, 99 miles an hour in the seventh inning. One more as hard as he can throw it. Keep shaking until he gets to the slider. Well, he gave him the slider a couple times, so I think what he wanted is he wanted a lot of shakes so it would have Peterson thinking. That's all that was. Creating doubt. Yep. 2 2 coming. And he laid off the slider. That's a good take by Peterson. It's three and two. So 
So now Garcia will be in motion. Smith tells DeGrom that he's going to play behind Garcia at first. Hero would be next. DeGrom has struck out nine today. And make it ten. He gets Peterson looking. So DeGrom finishes the seven innings. Now the Mets will try and win it for him in the bottom of the seventh, down two to one. Close it for the Brewers. He has been perfect in save opportunities this year, and he has been absolutely devastating now as a full time closer. Really digging at that mound to get a really good groove so he can push off it. And now really digging in where he lands to try to erase what's been done by Burns and DeGrom. Unscored upon in 31 of his 33 appearances this year. He hasn't pitched in eight days when he got his 20th save against the Cubs. More strikeouts than any reliever in baseball since 2017. He was a two inning guy for the first couple of years in Milwaukee, but now, last year in this, he's become a full time closer and they've Limited him to one inning at a time so he can pitch sometimes two, three days in a row. Might not throw the 95 plus that he did before, but has the complimentary slider to go along with that awkward, different kind of motion that puts hitters off. That's his numbers. And he's throwing a changeup this year, yes, which he, he really is. never had before. So. 12 hits all season long. So the Mets will go to their bench against Tater. Kevin Pillar will bat for Tomas Nito. And then Jose Peraza is on deck to bat for Jacob DeGrom. Nimmo is due up third in the inning. And then if anybody gets on Lindor. So Jacob DeGrom allows two earned runs. The 20th straight home start he's allowed two earned runs or fewer. Which is one shy of a major league record. But it will be small solace unless the Mets can rally here in the bottom of the seventh. And Pilar takes a backdoor slider for ball one. Mets have been unable to touch Hader in their previous chances against him. Maybe today's the day. And it's inside to Pilar, and it's 2 0. You think of yourself as a future championship kind of ball club? You got to be the other team's closer every once in a while. Got to do it. Well, DeGrom. Gave up the two solo home runs today. That might be enough to beat him. Pilar takes a strike. Haters going to the All Star game for the third time. The Brewers have three pitchers going Woodruff and Burns, who've started in this series, and Hader. First time they've ever had three pitchers going in one year. Mm. And Pilar swings and misses at an outside fastball, two and two. Jose Peraza on deck to pinch hit. He has done a remarkable job off the bench for the Mets. Pilar 0 for 2 in his career against Hader. And now 0 for 3 as Hader strikes him out to start at the bottom of the seventh. Well now Peraza who has certainly had his moments off the bench for the Mets. Go back to the doubleheader with Colorado back in May when he hit a home run in a one nothing Mets win. And then the second game of the doubleheader. He got the big hit as well. Sunday he had the fan interference double against the Yankees. That put the Mets in front to stay. Nice grab. Hader's got a little extra on his fastball today. I said that eight days have passed since he's thrown last. One out and nobody on. And Peraza gets one in the air to left center field. Back goes Bradley to the warning track at the wall. It's out of here! Jose Peraza ties the game with a pinch hit home run. Strikes again. The first home run Josh Hader has allowed this year. His first blown save of the year. And it's Peraza, the king of the bench mob, to tie it up in the seventh. Well, sometimes you got to mix intelligence with talent. 
He saw Hader just blow away Pilar with three straight fastballs after he got behind in the count. He looked for that fastball first pitch, got start, got it started early, and ties this ball game. Hader had been 20 for 20 in save opportunities, and now he's not. Slider to start off Nimmo, nothing in one. First pitch hitting up in the zone. And Peraza covers it. What a hit. Sixth home run of the year for Peraza as he continues to produce enormous hits off the bench. And two sliders in a row to Nimmo have him in an 0 2 hole. It's a side swing, almost like got it started in the on deck circle. He was ready to go. And contact right down the middle. Got that good backspin on the ball. And if you think you're a championship team, you got to beat a closer. That's how it goes. Helps to have a secret weapon. And <laughs> Nimmo went around on the slider, and he has struck out. Trip Gibson with the call, and Nimmo not happy at all about being called out on that check swing. Um, neither is Rojas. This is what Gibson sees. Well, he made a mistake there. Brandon certainly had a case. So two out and nobody on. Edwin Diaz getting ready for a potential extra inning. Francisco Lindor trying to prevent that extra inning from happening. Lindor drove in the first Met run with a bloop single in the first, struck out twice after that. Takes a big hack at an off speed pitch, and it's nothing in one. Mets home run means City will donate two thousand dollars to No Kid Hungry to help fight childhood hunger. Now more than ever, kids across America need our help. The worm has turned in Jacob Degrom games. They do get the runs late. Well, we'll see if they can get the clincher now. Andrew has struck out a pair, but in the middle of that sandwich, a home run by Peraza. That skips to the backstop. <laughs> makes the grab. <laughs> he can do it all. <laughs> Looks like a wide receiver running a pattern. Didn't even drop the bat. It's like the fan who holds the beer and catches the ball. Remember his last at bat. So mad at himself for not pulling the trigger. It's tied up inside, but it missed. Doing one to Francisco. Is that Peraza in the dugout saying that was for you, big guy? Lindor <laughs> with nine home runs for the year. Just two of them have come as a right hand batter, but he swung the bat so much better right handed than left. And he tops that one foul. Two and two. Hater not only beat you with stuff, also beat you with all of those arms and legs coming at you. He's like Chris Sale light out there in the mound closing for the Brewers. He gave up 15 home runs two years ago, just three last year, and hadn't given up a single one until this inning. 2 2. Lindor bloops one shallow left coming on as Yelich and he slides to make the catch and we're going to extra innings in game one of the day night doubleheader. Jose Peraza ties it up for New York against John top of the eighth inning extra innings at City Field in game one of the day nighter. See his numbers his last outing on Monday he was not sharp. Uh, his control of his fastball was erratic. He was able to throw his slider for a strike couple strikeouts but. Allowed a run. Other changes for the Mets. James McCann stays in behind the plate. Kevin Pillar goes to left field.
Nets will be playing their eighth extra inning game of the year. Jace Peterson is the free runner at second, having made the last out in the seventh. Keston Hira is the scheduled hitter, but Rowdy Telez will be the pinch hitter. Telez, who just arrived today after a trade from Toronto, the enormous slugger who had been struggling with the Blue Jays and had been sent to the minor leagues, gets his first at bat as a Brewer in extra innings. And Diaz's first pitch is up and away for ball one. Telez's defense, uh, because of the season of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he was supposed to get more at bats at first base. Those weren't to be. Six foot four, 255 pounds of Rowdy Telez takes up and in from Diaz, and it's 2 0. Telez out of that fabled high school program in Elk Grove, California, that produced J.D. Davis. And Dylan Carlson, coached by Dylan's dad, Jeff, produced so many major leaguers over the years. Swing and a miss at the high fastball, two and one. So, Les, two years ago, as a rookie, hit 21 home runs for Toronto. Last year, hit 283 with eight home runs in the short season. So, he is a major threat at the plate. And uh, gave the Brewers, who had an all right handed bench a left handed bat and here he is on the inside corner with Telez bailing out and it's two and two got better control of that fastball here this afternoon than he did on Monday night. Well, it didn't start well for Diaz on Monday he have a couple of hits and a walk that produced a run but once he got it dialed in after nearly a week off he was able to lock it down. Les fouls back the high fastball. Jackie Bradley is on deck. And then the pitcher spot. Doubtful that they're going more than one inning with Hader anyway, and they did double switch him in, so. Adrenaline of closing. The heaving chest underneath the uniform of Edwin Diaz. 2 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Rowdy Telez down on strikes. Diaz fans the first man to face him. All fastballs. Last one upstairs. So one out. Peterson still at second. And now Jackie Bradley, who grounded out and struck out against DeGrom. Jake went seven, allowed two runs, four hits, no walks, 10 strikeouts, the two home runs, 85 pitches. His world leading ERA went up from 0.95 to 1.08. Bradley takes a fastball away for ball one. Bradley, one hit in four career at bats against Diaz. It's a good fastball hitter, Jackie Bradley Jr. Never afraid of velocity. Past the mound, but there's Lindor behind the bag to sweep it up. Two out. Peterson goes to third. And now Tyrone Taylor will come up to pinch hit. Well, well placed was Lindor. Shaded towards the bag at second base. Made a most difficult play into an easy one. So now Taylor who had a base hit against Diaz to drive in a run in the ninth inning on Monday. Went one for four in that game starting in right field. He did not catch up to any fastballs by Tyler McGill earlier in that game. It was a slider that he hit off Diaz in the hole between third and short. Lindor has moved over two steps. A little closer to the hole against Taylor this time. Peterson at third two out and Taylor fouls off the fastball. Nothing in one. In the bottom of the eighth, Lindor will be the free runner for the Mets. It's Brent Suter for Milwaukee Brewers. Ivy Leaguer. Mets will have Smith, McCann, and McNeil coming up. Too high from Diaz, a ball and a strike.
Infield in the outfield shaded to the left against Taylor. That's mm -hmm. well outside two and one. If Taylor keeps the inning going Luis Urias who's already had a terrific day would be next. Can't be easy to come off that bench like McCann and just and trying to pick off 100 mile an hour fastballs. 2 1. And that missed. Just a little high, and it's 3 and 1. Good wall caught the home plate umpire. Gets the withering glance from the Mets dugout. Diaz has retired the first two. Peterson at third with two out. And Taylor fouls it away, and now it's 3 and 2. Staying with fastballs against Taylor. Taylor now has caught up pretty much to the fastball because that's all he's seen. But he does have a hole up and in with that fastball. That's what McGill was able to use on Monday night. 3 2 coming. Too high, ball four. And so Rios will come up with two men on. So a two out walk to the pinch hitter Tyrone Taylor and now Rios who provided the keynote in this game today with a lead off home run against Jacob DeGrom. Then had a base hit in the sixth inning against DeGrom as well. Well DeGrom got two and oh on Rios. Fouled off a 2 1 pitch and then on the 2 2 caught a fastball up in the strike zone. What a start from Milwaukee against the great DeGrom. So Rios trying to bookend this game. Diaz trying to put down the threat in extra innings and give the Mets a chance for a walk off. Taylor at first has four steals this year. And Rios lays off a first pitch slider, ball one. Walk to Taylor, the first walk of the game on either side. Rom didn't walk anybody. Burns didn't walk anybody. And Rios fouls back the slider, and it's one and one. Seen him down to his knee a few times yeah. today. Rios was a big prospect with the Padres. They envisioned him as the double play partner of Fernando Tatis for years to come. Decided to go in a different direction. Traded him to Milwaukee. And Rios is really only getting a chance to play every day because Travis Shaw is hurt and taking advantage of it. One one coming from Diaz. Taylor runs and they'll let him go. The pitch outside. It's a stolen base for Taylor, and now two are in scoring position. A two and one count to Arias, fifth stolen base of the year for Tyrone Taylor. Christian Yelich would be next. Two one. Off the outside corner with the fastball, and now it's three and one. It's a good call by Quinn Wolcott. It's not on the corner, it's off the corner. A couple of close pitches, but correct calls, even though Diaz questioned it. Well, you don't want to jump from the frying pan to the fire. You got Yelich on deck, who's had a rough series so far, but is always an enormous threat. And will not swing at pitches out of the strike zone. So you don't want to load the bases for him. But he just did. Back to back walks to Taylor and now to Arias. And Diaz will have to face Christian Yelich with the bases full. Hefner should visit Diaz right now. A little concerned about, you know, those pitches. So there he is. Uh, thought he was going to, should have got the fastball in the slider there. They're off the plate. This is where a pitching coach will just settle down. His pitcher and just say, hey, that's gone. That's done. That's passed. We got Yelich up now, and this is how we're going to attack this talented lefty. Yelich has never faced Diaz. Christian has gone 0 for 7 in this series and struck out five times, but 
the one thing that he has done extremely well this year is not chase. He's got 45 walks this year and would have the second highest on base percentage in the league if he had enough plate appearances. So you have to throw him strikes. So that's the conundrum for Diaz here after walking two batters in a row. Peterson at third. He was the free runner. Taylor at second. He walked and Rios at first. He walked. And here's Yelich. And he's hit oh. by the pitch and the Brewers take the lead. Diaz hits Yelich with his first pitch. That brings in the lead run. Peterson scores and it's three to two Milwaukee. Wow. It's a case of calling the fastball inside. He held on to it too long. And he missed his mark by about two feet. Another missed opportunity for Diaz in a non save situation. He came into the day with a 6.39 ERA in non save situations. That'll be an honor and run against his record, but nonetheless, two walks and a hit by pitch after two are out, force in a run. And now Willie Adamas trying to add to the Milwaukee lead. Adamas had a base hit off Diaz on Monday night down the right field line. Adamas 0 for 3 in this game. Two strikeouts and a ground out against DeGrom. That's to get their bullpen busy behind Diaz who bends a slider in for a strike and it's 1 and 1. Terry's familiar is up in the Mets bullpen as Diaz struggles here in the eighth. Familiar trying to get ready as fast as he can. 22 pitches already for Diaz in this inning. And Adamas leans out of the way of a slider and it's 2 and 1. I mean, he got the first two hitters. Telez struck him out with a fastball. Bradley got him on a ground ball to Lindor. And he appeared to be in command. But he lost Taylor, the pinch hitter, to a walk. And then he walked to Rios as well before hitting Yelich. Now Damas swings through a fastball, and it's two and two. Stern test here for Diaz. Ever since he's come over here, Adamas has had huge hits for the Brewers. If you, can, if you can limit it to one run, you give your team a chance in these extra innings with the free runner. Time asked for it. Diaz didn't realize it. That's will have Lindor as their free runner in the bottom of the eighth with Dom Smith to lead off the inning. 2 2 coming to Adamas, and he lifts one foul down the right side. That's tied this game in dramatic fashion on Jose Peraza's second career pinch hit home run. And they have allowed the Brewers to take the lead in excruciating fashion. Adamas swings and misses, and that ends the inning. And Diaz limits the damage to just the one run. Now the Mets will come up in the bottom of the eighth. Well, Harvard product Brent Suter will be bidding for the first save of his major league career. And just the opposite of Josh Hader, who was in with all that 95 plus in the great slider suit. Suter is more of a control pitcher, kind of a soft tosser. And we'll try to get through this Mets lineup with the ghost runner on second. So changes on the infield for the Brewers. Jace Peterson moves to first base. Luis Arias moves to second. Pablo Reyes comes in to play third. And with the free runner Lindor carrying the tying run at second, Dom Smith leads off and takes up an in from Suter for ball one. Suter's not a hard thrower. He'll top out around 88, 89 miles an hour. Dom will see an assortment of four different pitches from Suter. Dom is 0 for 3 in this game with a couple of strikeouts. And he fouls back one and one. So there are the changes. Peterson at first, Arias moves to second, Pablo Reyes in to play third. After Hero left for a pinch hitter. Hmm. 
the door at second and nobody out. And it's lifted foul on the breaking ball from Suter. One and two. Josh Hader, who blew the save, his first blown save of the season, now has a chance to be a winning pitcher. But the Mets trying to catch their free runner at least and keep this game going. One two coming. In the dirt, stopped nicely by Narvaez. And that keeps Lindor at second. It's two and two. James McCann is sitting in the cleanup spot. Remember, Pete Alonso was taken out for a pinch runner with the Mets down by a run in the sixth inning. McKinney replaced him in that spot, and then McCann took over the number four spot in the order when he was placed after the Mets pinch hit for Nito. So it'll be McCann's first at bat of the day. 2 2. And Smith is hit by the pitch. So Dom will go to first base, and the Mets will have two on. And I think it got his hand, not his helmet, but I'm not 100% sure. Kind of threw up his hands in front of his face. Pointed to his chin, as if to say, I, it would have hit me in the chin. It was someone from the crowd that he was yelling at, I believe. I'm sure he wasn't yelling at the Brewers' dugout? No. And oh, no. it did it did get him in the chin. So Off his hand and into his mouth. So that's what he was pointing at. We saw that with Bryce Harper earlier this year, the same thing. So the Mets now have two on with nobody out. Dom will try and shake that off. And James McCann will come to the plate for the first time in the game. Suter just uh, apologized to Smith. I don't think he's feeling it right now. I'm not sure what hurts most for Dom, his hand or his face. He just kind of threw up his hands just to kind of. Oof. Oh right boy. in the mouth. Jeez. So first and second and nobody out. They bring the corner in. Reyes on the grass at third thinking McCann might be bunting. And James set to swing and he takes just outside for ball one. And now the Mets have the tying run at second the potential winning run at first. We're in extra innings in what was scheduled for a seven inning game. Jeff McNeil on deck. Suter's the kind of pitcher Gary that's got to make his living by getting the ball on the ground inducing a double play. And knee high. Change up for a strike, and it's one and one. Can started the opening game of the series, went 0 for 3. After a good road trip. And McCann fouls it away. A fastball from Suter, one and two. to follow. You know, Suter's been uh, using his fastball here against McCann. That one up in the strike zone, looking for the strikeout, even though he doesn't throw 90 miles an hour. Suter's last save came in the minor leagues in 2012. He also had one for Harvard. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his heart's got to be racing. This uh, is a, a place that, of course, he, he rarely is in. Well, they used their best two relievers, Williams and Hader, but the Mets got to Hader. And now McCann fouls off a fastball, and it's one and two. Williams put himself in jeopardy by hitting Conforto with a pitch to load the bases, but then got Guillaume to ground out to end the sixth. But Jose Peraza's pinch hit home run tied the game in the seventh. Edwin Diaz hitting Christian Yelich with a pitch with the bases loaded to put the Brewers in front here in the eighth. And now the Mets try to respond. Lindor the free runner at second Smith at first with nobody out. And McCann lays off it's just outside a change up two and two. I don't know if this is a good take or he just could not pull the trigger. Late good movement by Suter on that change up. Left hand hitters to follow McNeil and Conforto behind McCann. 
And fouls off the fastball to stay in there. Suter's pitched in a lot of way, Gary. I'm surprised he hasn't thrown one cutter in. Again, the 2 2. And it's down. He thought he might get strike three. And we saw Diaz upset in the top of the inning. And now Suter with the emphatic reaction to Quinn Walcott's ball strike call. He thought he made the pitch on the knees, definitely had plate. Could have called tried it. to sell it didn't get the call now it's three and two. And facing Suter for the first time he's already seen seven pitches in this at bat. And a look back at the door is not going anywhere. Nobody covering. That's a good move by Suter. Is everyone thinking twice? We're looking around to see if anybody's sneaking in behind him, but the in middle infielders are spread. 3 2. McCann fouls it off. James McCann in his first at bat of the day in a big spot, putting on a real performance against Brent Suter. Trying to at least get that tying run home from second. And Redwin Diaz allowed the Brewers to take the lead. Third time in his career, by the way, that Diaz has hit a batter with the bases loaded. And his second time as a Met. He had one last year against the Red Sox. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat from Suter to McCann. Good move by McCann. You can not that you can freeze a pitcher out, but it's good to make him think about it. By the way, you see, Suter didn't have to go to his hat for the signs. He's got it memorized. Good gray matter. You know. Three two coming. Outside ball four, and the bases are loaded. That is a quality turn at bat for James McCann, and now the Mets have the tying and winning runs in scoring position with nobody out. There's nobody throwing in the bullpen for the Brewers. Chris Hook, the pitching coach, on his way out to talk to Suter, who's hit a batter and walked a batter. Reminiscent of Edwin Diaz's top of the eighth. And now the Mets could win it with a base hit. But something you wouldn't uh, normally see from Suter, who is a control artist. He's a guy that usually lives on the bottom of the strike zone. But now you put him in a situation where the adrenaline rush alone. Maybe has taken him out of where his strength is. Well, certainly the the changeup that he thought he got in at the knees and that demonstrative reaction, much as with Diaz in the top of the inning, when you see a pitcher fighting for calls like that, it's not a good sign. That's right. Unless you can uh, forget about it, and with that walk, obviously he didn't. Let's see how the Brewers play their infield here. Fly ball could tie the game. Base hit could win the game. But you don't want to play too far in. Would you concede the tying run to try to get a double play? They're going to play their middle infielders halfway. Corners are in against McNeil, who had an infield hit his last time up. Base is loaded, nobody out. Now McNeil takes a slider on the inside corner for a strike, nothing in one. The infield configuration allows them to turn the double play up the middle. If the infielders have to move to their left or right, but if they have to come in on a baseball and can't turn two, it allows them a chance maybe to get Lindor in a force play at home. Got speed with Lindor at third, not so much at second and first with Smith and McCann. And McNeil takes inside the ball and a strike. Michael Conforto on deck. Mets have had a free runner, a hit batsman, and a walk in this inning to load the bases. And McNeil takes it low. Another slider from Suter. Two and one. 
It's gotten so rough for McNeil. He needs a game where he ends it as a hero. He has never had a walk off RBI in his career. Middle infielders remain halfway with the corners in. Tying run at third, winning run at second. And McNeil lines one base hit. Lindor is in. Here comes Smith. Here comes Bradley's throw to the plate on a hop. Not in time, and the Mets win it. <laughs> Jeff McNeil with his first career walk off RBI as the Mets rally in the seventh and they rally in the eighth and they've taken the first two games of the series from Milwaukee as they win this one four to three. Gutsy effort uh, by the Mets in this game. Gutsy effort by McNeil. He hasn't had a lot to cheer about this year. Had to be in the back of his brain as he's trying to come up with that big hit. Finally ends it as a hero here in game one. Right in the middle of the plate. He knew it right away, but Jackie Bradley Jr.'s arm left this game still in peril. But he could not come up with an accurate throw. And the hustle of Dom twice in this series has scored a big run. And aggressive base coaching by Gary De Sarcina to send Dom Smith. Figured the ball was on the grass long enough and that Dom had a good enough break that he had a chance to beat Bradley's throw, and that he did. And so the Mets have now won four of their last five. They've taken the first two of the series from Milwaukee. Their seventh walk-off win of the year. McNeil with his first ever walk-off RBI. Peraza with the home run in the seventh to tie against Josh Hader. And then the Mets rally for two in the bottom of the eighth to win it four to three. There's your game summary McNeil with the two run single in the bottom of the eighth to win it after Peraza hit the pinch hit home run to tie it. The Mets get Jacob DeGrom off the hook. He finishes his night or his afternoon with a 1.08 ERA through his first 15 starts. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by five hour energy. It's the one when you got to get stuff done. By Try Honda, contact your local Honda dealer for a great deal today. By Impractical Jokers, the Impractical Jokers return with all new episodes Thursdays on True TV. By Toyota, dear driver, hurry in and save Toyota. And by Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. Final score in game one of our day night doubleheader in eight innings, the Mets four, the Brewers three. Mets will go for the sweep of the doubleheader and the series tonight. 6.30 the coverage right here on SNY. Exciting win for the Mets in the day game. DeGrom gave up two home runs, but the Mets got him off the hook. Peraza with the game-tying home run. And then Dom Smith comes home with the winning run on Jeff McNeil's walk-off hit in the bottom of the eighth. Now for Ron Darling, Steve Gelbs, and our entire SNY crew. I'm Gary Cohen at City Field. Time for WB Mason Post Game Live. Let's join Gary Apple and Todd Zeal in the studio, guys. <laughs>